This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare has been a blessing to my channel since I signed up, and I'm happy to have them sponsor this video because they offer a genuine online community of quality instructors that offer courses on just about anything. Literally, there are thousands of classes to dive into, with subtitles in multiple languages as well. I'm currently looking at some editing courses, as well as some videography courses, to make some obviously needed improvements to my channel, and so far I'm learning a lot fast. I'm really enjoying Jordy Vandeput's courses. They're super easy to follow and great to follow along with. Oh yeah, I forgot about this part. I do this all on my phone. Yeah, the Skillshare app actually has a great interface and it's super convenient and just makes everything easier to do. So here's the best part. The first thousand people to use the link in the description will get a month free of Skillshare. And like I said, you can find it at the top of the description box. So act now, go there and click that now and get signed up. Doesn't matter if you're already an established content creator or you're looking just to start something new. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today, go down to that link in the description box, and the first thousand people are going to get one month free of Skillshare. Come on and learn something with me today. Misinformation is a poison, and for those who seek knowledge or generally just want to sate their morbid curiosity, my channel tends to be a great fountain of information, but sometimes I fuck things up. I've been doing this for over a year, and in my entire young career, it's been a learning experience in itself. And however, with that acknowledgement, I must also acknowledge the simple fact that, like I just said, mistakes happen. And I myself have been guilty of being misinformed, and as a side effect of my channel blowing up like this, some misinformation has spread like wildfire. I recently deleted a video. A video surrounding a popular gore video that, for some reason, people find hard to find, and I, I don't know about all of that. I don't encourage people to go look for it, nor do I exactly have a place where you can. But Shuab Aslam was a young man who committed suicide on Discord while live streaming it simultaneously to his YouTube channel with two other people in a chat on March 14th of 2018, when he was just 18 years old. The video is infamous for the gun used, also the amount of misinformation tied to the event itself. Of course, the toxicity of Reddit and 4chan amplified this misinformation and it spread like wildfire. In fact, this began, I believe it was 24 hours or so, within that time frame after his death. Thus, in my amateur hour days of dipping my toes into graphic content, I got the story very, very, very wrong. Like many people still do, four years later. The rumor began with a sign that Shuab held up before he killed himself that read, By R9K, 31418. Screenshots also emerged from a Discord with the name Shuabi and another user named Reiko3333, I'm sorry, who was well known on 4chan at the time for his allegations of grooming as well as bullying boys into taking HRT, which are hormone replacement drugs, as well as taking lewd and, and allegedly even nude photos for blackmail. Screenshots, like I said, leaked of this server, or one he operated out of at least, and he called this his trap harem. Trap referring to a term used for feminine guys in sexual positions or photos that are presented as females. Rico targeted people who were struggling with their sexuality and identities, or had to hide their true selves from their families. He took advantage of this for his own pleasure, and he blackmailed many people. Conversations also leaked between Rico and a user named Shuabi, and some 4chan posts involving Shuabi would often be commented on by a user named Rico. 
To most, this was confirming that he at least was aware of Shuby's existence and what transpired, but he denies involvement. The popular rumor is that because of those screenshots, Shuby was struggling internally with himself and was groomed and manipulated by Reiko, which resulted him in committing suicide. Except that isn't what happened at all. While the reality of a supposed trap harem is not confirmed, the way Reiko behaved could easily be trolling if the poster on 4chan was actually the same person. There's nothing stopping anybody from making a username on there and posting like that, or even faking screenshots. However, the last part seems to be the case. If one thing is certain, Reiko has had a big ego about everything, including his very stupid behavior. Reiko actually blackmailing and grooming boys and making them take hormone treatments and demanding nudes on top of it is all up for debate. But the things Reiko has said and the photos like these lewds surfaced as well, it all kind of points towards him being guilty of at least running some sort of sick operation out of a discord. However, they could also be set up by Reiko himself or other trolls. Regardless the lack of actual evidence tying Reiko to Shuobi, internet warriors, namely redditors, have stepped into their live-action roleplay and marked themselves as private investigators on the case while actually serving to fuel the fires of misinformation and muddy the waters further. Rather than actually help or do anything to clear the obvious troll opportunity some real shitty people have taken. They also have absolutely no authority beyond their reddit roleplay, so this alone is deeply disturbing as well as cringy as fuck. The sad reality here is this. Shobi was depressed. He liked anime, he liked the comforts of internet subculture, places where he felt like he could belong and express himself without judgement. Shoab Aslam was born on February 29th of 2000 and grew up from what is public in a normal middle class family setting. He was Pakistani and American, loved anime, and was allegedly very open about his struggles with depression. He was also young and impressionable. At the time of his death, he was just 18 years old, and he was deeply depressed, and that is certain. Even his Reddit history and his YouTube channel reflects this. He was subscribed to Elliot Roger, and allegedly these screenshots of him, more or less idolizing him, were also leaked. Elliot Roger was a spree killer, regarded as YouTube's incel killer for his hate fueled rampage on May 23, 2014, in Isla Vista, California. He killed six people and injured more than 22 before taking his own life. He wrote a manifesto blaming the female gender for his actions and more or less the entirety of his self-loathing and suffering. In school, Elliot was heavily bullied and he claimed that he was unable to make any friends, though people later said that he was one, one of the people that rebuffed their attempts at being friendly, and at some point he started and began maintaining a personal YouTube account and online blog. In both, he complained about his loneliness and rejection by others, and he also frequently led online communities that promoted misogyny and anti-feminism. Starting in September of 2013, he began to steal money from his parents and his grandmothers to buy several guns he used in his rampage. He then wrote a full manifesto which he titled, My Twisted World, The Story of Elliot Roger. Elliot Roger would go down as one of the most famous incel killers and was idolized by other mass murderers and people tied into incel culture. Shuibi seemed to also go through a phase where he saw Elliot Roger as someone who acted upon their beliefs in pain. He idolized a terrible person, but that does not mean Shuibi was a bad person. The only concerning criticism I could really find here is the fact that he discussed possibly shooting up his school allegedly at one point in his life. My interpretation of his actions and behavior were more or less out of rejection and depression, though, in the true sense. He felt that these negative cultures and figures were his out, something that he could relate to. And when you're in a negative mind space, you tend to go towards more negative things, negative outlets, anger, you know, sadness. That you know, those are things that aren't exactly pretty. Don't involve a nice, bright culture things, and. He felt that he could relate to this. He felt that he could belong to other people who have taken drastic actions. At least that's my interpretation of what was going through his head, and maybe why he chose to be the way he was. In the end, regardless of what he once thought, Shuab would also only end up hurting himself, and on March 14th, 2018, in Stockton, California. 
Shoaib Aslam began a video call over Discord with two other people, who were assumed to be his friends. He also simultaneously began a live stream on YouTube. My take on this is that this would be the one idea he clung to from other murderers like Elliot Roger and possibly others at the time. A last piece of glory by showing the world his pain, perhaps. The stream was titled Hey, and it began with Shuobi fiddling around with a KSG tactical shotgun. A blue tarp is also visible behind him as he hoped to cause minimal collateral damage and mess. After about five minutes, he puts the gun to his head, and he pulls the trigger. The force of the gun is so powerful, unless the video is watched frame by frame, it's actually not very graphic at first glance, at least by standards of gore and blood, but brain matter and blood spatter are visible on the ceiling from the knocked webcam's perspective. The full video is around 50 minutes total in length, and also the details the discovery of his body by his mother. He apparently slid a note under the door that read, I'm dead, don't let the kids see the body. And then his mother finds his body and calls 911. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I'm keeping the recording going until, until someone comes in the room. I can't go back in the stream. Um, oh. oh, he made another stream, okay? It was on the old, um, it was called this time. Oh, shit, he linked it? Oh, the fucking chat. God damn it. I have witnessed this murder. His family assured him suicide was a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And they're right. If you or someone you know are suffering from depression or suicidal thoughts, just be there for them or reach out for help. People are here to listen to you and listen to the people who need listening too. Assure them that they are loved because for some of us who have been there, we understand what it feels like to feel alone when you can't control the pain inside. Shuibi was not involved with Reiko at all. 
He frequented Reddit, 4chan, was a weeb in his own right, and suffered from understated and to the public's knowledge untreated mental health issues, namely severe depression. Further rumors circulated that his final straw was arguments with his parents or an ex-girlfriend, and the ex-girlfriend theory has been debunked. Uh, no one but his parents would know if there was any argument between them or any event that would have led to this to happen. They, however, remain adamant that they were supportive as possible, and I want to believe that was the case, so I choose to. Sometimes these things just happen, and we can't just point fingers, but reflect on what we can do for others in the future. And Shuab Aslam was among tens of thousands of young men and women each year that commit suicide. Whether he have been, whether we could have helped him, anyone could have helped him in the world, rather. That just remains unclear. Stop listening to Reddit. Stop falling for obvious 4chan trolls and look into things yourself. Listen to YouTubers you trust, if any at all, and listen to the victims' families and what the things they say. Listen to the victims when they are here before they pull the trigger. The screenshots from the Discord are from a user that set their name to Shuabi. They had nothing to do with him. At this point, it's sad that there's actually misinformation tied to this, and I solely blame Reddit for it, because they're the only ones talking about it at this point and spreading the massive amount of misinformation that of course wants to paint another platform as a demon, merely to exploit them for clout. It's really pitiful. One can set their name to anything they want on Discord. I could be Mr. Beast on there. It doesn't matter. Once we get to the face-to-face -face commentary, I would like to bring up the 4chan post that a friend of Shuobi's posted, debunking a lot of the rumors and explaining what really went down. And that's just the facts. So, undermining someone's death, undermining someone's depression, just for your little updutes is kind of sickening, or just for any glorification in any way. I find it sick. I find that it undermines other people with mental health disorders and issues that are still alive right now. So stop doing it. Read between the lines a little. So, this one, obviously, um is really long overdue and it wasn't as lengthy as i wanted to make it but i mean really it's another case of like ronnie mcnutt it's something that got over over sensationalized excuse me so much that it became something it wasn't and this actually all unfolded about 12 to 24 hours after shuab committed suicide and i don't even know if i'm pronouncing his name correctly see it's like this is not something that it literally just needs to be open shut at this point and people just can't stop trying to get a piece of a pie that doesn't exist. Like, just to start, let's go over the screenshot. It says, I would like to clear up some rumors about the shoe would be suicide. I was his friend. Here is some backstory. It's in green text format, so become friends with Anon from here a month ago. Genuinely awesome guy to talk to. Loved him so much. Had lots of fun staying up late, discussing weeb things and whatnot. Group of friends trying to constantly help him through whatever he was going through go through something with his mother. This is where people start to build a narrative of, oh, there was an argument, it was this, it was this, it was this. And I mean, there is, I'm sure that had something to do with it. It would be stupid to just say, oh, well, he just woke up one day and did it. But what no one can truly say for sure, and I don't know why everyone wants to speak beyond the family, as well as literally go with a heavily debunked narrative of this, basically this kid's death. Uh, I mean, he was 18 years old. That's fucking young. We try to convince him that his parents care for him and that he should trust them. It seems like he's okay for the most part. One day it starts to really bother him, sets up live stream and sends it to us. He does his thing, despite us trying to get him not to do it. So already right there, this implies that this was one of the people that was in the live stream. Okay, so it's safe to assume that's true. And actually, one of these people did reach out to me a long-ass time ago. I say a long-ass time ago because it was more than a month ago. And I had this on the back burner beyond so many projects. And I regret this now because... I could have possibly interviewed them and asked them questions myself. So out of negligence on my part, I missed out on that opportunity. But this, uh, to me, it's it's convincing enough. And we're not even done here. Um, this was also validated multiple times, too. Also with pictures of Shuab that people didn't have. You know what I mean? So let's go into this again. Fast forward several hours. People find the stream. Spread all over the internet within a matter of hours. People start making up many rumors about him, memeing him to shit. I can confirm that almost every single rumor that is being said about him is untrue. No, that was not his ex. Her name was not Kat. It wasn't on Skype. His mother was not the one crying. It's not fake. R9K did not drive him to suicide. There are only a select few people who were actually there, and none of them are going to post in this thread. 
we have lost a friend, a brother. Rest in peace, Shuibi. You will always be loved. Now, it's weird that he does say that they won't post in the thread. That's weird. That is really weird. But, I mean, again, it literally sounds like he's speaking from someone who was there. Now, people can always say, okay, well, what about what you just said about people can go to 4chan and fake shit? That's very true. Um, the difference was this was validated, and even his parents pretty much validate this is the case. Um, unfortunately, it's as simple as that. That's what happens when people say, oh, I'm depressed, and no one fucking listens. That's the problem. The 4chan rumor started up quickly. Uh, people believe that it was to remove Discord threads as well as uh, just discussion threads like that in general from R9K. I'm not too in-depth with R9K's culture. I am not big on 4chan. I used to browse X and shit back in the day, so that's about it. This is like whole next level subculture of the internet type shit people do and 4chan has pulled some really fucked up things just to get things changed around there or to just troll the public in general you remember that time that they had everybody believing that uh the peep frog or pepe is racist yeah that happened and people still believe this there's people on twitter crying about that right now Yep, same with the OK symbol with your hands. Yet yeah, none of that's real. None of that was ever used by white supremacists or anything. 4chan. Not to say the 4chan's all bad, because it's really not. It is kind of a grungy little cesspool, but overall, people from 4chan have done a lot more good than anybody from Reddit really ever has in their life, I think. Uh, that site's gross. It really upsets me, too, the armchair, uh, I would say armchair psychologist. There's plenty of those on Reddit, but I'm talking about, like, everybody's a cop on Reddit, everybody's a lawyer on Reddit, everybody's a doctor on Reddit, everybody's a fucking musician. They're an omnipotent deity. Uh, they're my ball sack. You know, it's really fucking great. Reddit just sucks. I don't like Reddit. I'm sorry. If you use Reddit, that's fine. Just don't be Reddit, okay? It's like, it's like saying, okay, well, I go on 4chan, but I don't want to be 4chan. Uh, do you remember Marcel Hess? I got a video on him. Uh, yeah, 4chan killer. He literally yelled, I am 4chan. I was going to make a We Live in a Society joke, but the dude actually unironically had a Joker poster. Like, this this shit's real. This, this happens in our world, guys. This, is, this fucking happens, so... But this is a case, just pandering off here, this is literally another case of undiagnosed or undertreated or understated fucking depression, and welcome to America. If you have any more information on this uh, that would be worth following up on, please let me know. Contact me via my business email or my Twitter. You can find all my links in my description and all that information pinned down below as well. Um, I'm also partnered with Gamersups now. That's something to know. You can use the link in the description to automatically get a discount on all your purchases. They're a more natural alternative to G Fuel. They actually use organic coffee bean extract for their caffeine. Uh, they won't mess with your blood sugar. They're keto-friendly and vegan. And they also don't sponsor people like Keemstar. But we can shitpost. And there's anime titties. But that's all I have on this. Uh, don't email me or bother me with this unless you actually have some form of like proof that you can bring to the table. I don't want the Reddit he said, she said. I got the most updates. Like, I want the facts. So. I'm Plague Moth, if you don't know that already. The most controversial commentary on YouTube. I also have a bunch of long list of standing titles that are uncontested, as I am, like, perfect and omnipotent myself. So yeah, check out the Patreon if you'd like to join the Discord and stuff like that. But that's all I got on this one. I'm really glad I can clear the air on it. I'm glad that I got my other video removed. People were, like, still finding it when I had it unlisted. I kind of want to just use it as reference, not to keep it up. But there was like a 500,000 view video and and it's like, I did, that's bad. That's a lot of it. Just spreading the Reiko story. Like, that's bad. That's real bad, you know. So this is why I get so upset about this. And I'm just as guilty, but here we are correcting it. Anyways, see ya.